the show where we're going to town ali welcome back to the big boy podcast you know how we run things thank you yeah awesome already having a good time <laughs> strictly professional here as you can see i'm here in the studios of Staybridge, uh, <laughs> uh enjoying this this nice fine i think i got the handicap room <laughs> uh pretty Just, sure so um, get that extra bar for the bathtub in case you're drunk you grab yeah. onto it. <laughs> oh, on. shower, so, you know, I'm going to be taking advantage of the shots tonight. So, uh, <laughs> welcome back, Ellie. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So, obviously, now this is your second time on the Bitcoin podcast. You can be, you can consider yourself a crypto person. Like, you're no longer a GPP. Like, you know, you, you, a, a general purpose person is what we, what, uh, and it's kind a muggle exactly it's kind of a bad term but you know we said it one time and it stuck and our audience liked it and that is what it is so uh, um thank you for removing that title from me <laughs> yeah there you go you didn't even know but now you know so what so i saw your recent thumbnail which caught my eyes is that you're selling an nft for half a million dollars and i think that was just kind of like the thumbnail of like the trailer right. i have to ask you did you really sell it for half a million dollars? <laughs> I did not. Oh. Seems like you didn't watch the video. <laughs> no, this has been a ongoing thing since releasing that. So in the video, I explain like no one's going to click on this unless I have give you a reason to. So the reason was like, this is a half a million dollar NFT. Come look at it. And so then a bunch of people looked at it. And the goal is that if I get that many people caring about it, then it is worth that amount. But right now it is not selling for that number just yet. <laughs> This I th I thought it was I thought like the the thing that was interesting to me is like you you said you sold your art for free for all these years or done your art for free but now there's an opportunity to not do it for free and I think that do you see this as substantial or is it just like oh here's another weird crypto thing that I somehow have gotten involved with or are you gonna continue to try to sell your art for um, as NFTs? Yeah, this is. Definitely substantial. I just came back from the Miami Crypto Expo and I'm just like deep in it now. For sure, I want to experiment so much more and not just like selling my art, but like using NFT NFTs as the medium. So like I do paintings, right? And those you can take a picture of that and make it an NFT, but really it exists as a painting. But I want to make NFTs where it has to be an NFT because you can't do it any other way. So whether it evolves or procreates like the crypto kitties did or you know you unlock something or gain access because you own the nft that would be like next level for me and i want to you know experiment with what you all you can do with nfts hmm. are you excited and looking forward to selling an nft for millions of dollars on accident <laughs> <laughs> on accident yeah yeah i hope it works out i mean there's still a week left in the auction there are I don't know, 40 some people that favorited it. Let's just hope that it's 40 whales. <laughs> Look, she's already speaking the lingo, Jesse. You hear that? 40 whales. <laughs> so whale drops in the pond. Yeah, you yeah. never know crypto. I never could have seen this NFT craze coming. I'm upset now at all the time where I could have been learning how to do art and didn't. And, you know, now I just kick myself in the butt because I could be putting out NFTs. Some. There's still time. Are you kidding me? It all still feels very new. I know it seems like it's been around for a while because you guys are actual in the industry, right? But it's it's definitely still the beginning. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I'm gonna throw it to you, Jesse. I don't want to bombard the conversation because I can do that easy. <laughs> okay. Um. I don't know. What do you want to talk about, Ali? I remember last time I told you that I lifted and you were like, oh, we should have talked about that. And I'm like, okay, well, next time. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Tell me about your lifting. Uh, I used to power lift and then I injured myself. 
and then I stopped oh, powerlifting. So, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> props to you for knowing when to stop. I don't exactly have that self control. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're a powerlifter? Yeah, I've been following a powerlifting program for a few months now, so nothing crazy, but yeah, specifically been focusing on that. My numbers. Yeah. Lord. What's your total? Like, my, uh, gosh. <laughs> You're allowed to embellish because nobody going to know. Yeah, right. I was going to make it true. up. I do know my heaviest deadlift sumo was 256. So oh, you pull sumo. Double me. Yeah, it's so much easier. What about what about you? Interesting. I do conventional. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> do you I mean. Grip or do you hook grip? Hook grip. There you go. Ah, okay, Gross. okay, okay, okay. Do you know my calluses? <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Nice. <laughs> You're like, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, she can hook her up, sumo, okay. <laughs> Double her body weight, okay. <laughs> now, let's get really meta. Let's figure out how to turn this conversation about powerlifting into an NFT, and then this clip of this conversation into uh -huh. an NFT. You see what I'm saying? We can get really meta. Yes. And whoever we... owns the NFT then gets powerlifting programming from me. There we go. Is that? Can we do that? Let's do that. Let's clip. That'd this. be crazy. You know, you buy it, you get power. Man, we can do anything. The, the sea of opportunity is endless when it comes to it. That's um, true. I got to so, learn how to be a programmer. That's what it is. Yeah, no. That's the only <laughs> part that sucks. And then it's like, no programmers want to help you in this space. That's something like, uh, you know, if you're looking forward to hiring a, a software developer to help you with your ideas, Ali, um, no, you're not the same. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to work with you. They only want to work with things that'll, you know, make them wealthy. Like I just found a lot of bad luck trying to find software developers in this space. They're just like, I don't yeah, want to work on hard. that project. I'm already working my own project. So screw your project. I'm doing my own thing. That's pretty much right. like the run of the mill response. So good luck. That's I did get luck. lucky though. I've been working with my buddy, his name's Brian Wagner. We made an app together a while ago. And um, just recently with my NFT, I had all these images, but they're in WordPress, you know, in like that database on all my blog posts. So mm -hmm. like 2,800 some blog posts. And I was like, hey, can you scrape my website? This seems like a project you'd be good at. Like just take every photo and like put it into one NF like one image that I can make an NFT. Like, what do you think about that? Could you maybe get on board? And then he emails back two hours later. I did it already. <laughs> and he sent Any me friends like that. The image. Yeah, he's so awesome. And he sent the image like, he was like, yeah, no problem. Here you go. And it was beautiful and giant. And so I think, yeah, I've, I've tried to work with a lot of people. And uh, he, I think I just got lucky because Brian is awesome. He should uh, join the Slack. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. I'm I'm obviously gonna send him this episode now. He'll yeah. We'll, we'll get him. We'll get him in. <laughs> we'll have people beating down Brian Wagner's door trying to get NFTs made. Like, hey man. <laughs> um, so first, the the first thing I want to do is I frame this question is I apologize for what you were a part of, and the, the second part of the question is how was a Miami Bitcoin conference? Like, how did that go? Because the last time I went, it was pretty wild. So I was just apologizing on behalf of the whole crypto community yeah. how wild it gets. I don't know if they were. It gets no, wild. it was cool. It was really cool. I had no idea what I was getting into. It was I just got connected to the guys that are running it all. They're like, we had this idea 90 days ago, and now here it is. And it was just like crazy. Tons of people. They like live painted a Bugatti or something. No, wait, a Porsche 911. Um I live painted on stage there and they like turned it into an NFT. It was really fun. Open bar, you know, you know, you've been to that stuff. Mm hmm. I got invited to a boat. I didn't go to the boat, but we all know what happens on boats, right? <laughs> we know what happens on boats. Um, so explain that process. Cause there's a lot of people right now who are probably listening or a lot of people who would be listening and they're like, what is this NFT? What do they mean they turned it into an NFT? How does that work? Like, can we walk someone through that process of turning a piece of art into an NFT? Cause maybe they might want to try, you know, like you said, you did a painting on stage and they turned it into an NFT. Like what platform did they use? Um, how did they store the file? Like, well, how did that process work? Or do you even 
were you a part of that or are you just like boom here's my painting and now it's an nft i was still on stage and they already had it up for auction so i don't know the whole process that they did yeah it was crazy oh, but wow. um i've done it on OpenSea, and it's really user friendly surprisingly you don't have to do all the things where you're coding the back end and making it evolve and procreate like a crypto kitty it can just be an image with like very little metadata that you just fill out like you're uploading a picture it was a little tough with mine because the picture's so big i had to find what would still like look awesome but be within their limits because i think it's 100 megabytes is the upper limit for uh open mm -hmm. but and then at the conference i was talking to um another crypto artist Ken Bozak? I don't know if you're familiar with him oh, in this space. Yeah. He used to write for us. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. We got a deep history with Ken Bozak. Oh, yeah. Oh, drama? No, not really. Not at all. He just, okay. He, it was great. He wrote for us. Um, he started, he was our guy, our boots on the ground, because we couldn't go to all the conferences all the time. Corey lived in Brazil. I lived in Texas, and he was like, hey, I just want to go to these conferences and live off of crypto and write for you guys and share my experience. And he did that for a long time. And then he was like, hey, I'm going to make my own podcast. And I was like, we were like, cool, man, do your thing. And he, he's he's been great. Um, yeah, he's definitely awesome. Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah. He ran Bozak, so. Yeah, he walked me through how to mint something using wax. It was really cool. Mm. So, uh, wax. yeah, yeah. I guess I'm going to experiment with other platforms, basically. But... Right now I have one on OpenSea. And actually, you know how I made that video? I was like, if I get enough eyes on this, then it'll be valuable. I just looked at OpenSea and like sorted the 19 million NFTs by most viewed. And mine's number seven out of all of them. So at least I got eyes on it. We'll see if that, uh, chance. Come we'll see on. If that translates to a sale. <laughs> Come on, whales. Help out Allie. Help yeah, out right. Allie. Help the themselves out. I just made a really valuable piece of artwork. They just help themselves to it. <laughs> That's right. That's very right. Do you get to charge whatever? Can't you charge like a, hey, you know, not an auction. This is how much it's worth. Like yeah, five. I think you can set that. I put mine as an auction. So right now it's at 5 ETH. Like, I, I'll, I will let it go for that amount. If that's what the market values my art as, they'll sell it. That's not bad. No, I'm not mad at it. In 14 four years of work for like... 10k okay <laughs> according to the experts four years from now five ETH will be worth five planets so oh. yeah hold on <laughs> no well yeah. i'm gonna purchase one planet and then put four in savings <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea you know as long as it's enough to get you a ticket to mars because obviously it looks like we're going there fast elon's talking that shit again elon musk yeah so you know, we're flying helicopters on Mars. There's going to be a moon base, apparently. NASA's like, we're going to put a we're going to put a base on the moon, which is something we need. You know. Yeah. And so <laughs> wake up in the morning, like you know what? Yeah. <laughs> if we only had a moon base. Yeah, like we need it. We need. <laughs> Sorry, I was making myself laugh. <laughs> Jesse, stop letting me dominate the conversation with them. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to ask. Um. I don't know. So you is, guys haven't minted your own yet? Can I help you out? Let so me make a... <laughs> maybe it's very funny. You can help us, you can help us <laughs> mint NFTs. Um, we, we are trying to make a, a couple. Right now we've got Bitcoin Corey's vision, which is <laughs> which is a joke. Uh, it's, it's a long story, but there's something called Bitcoin Satoshi's vision, which, you know what? Don't Let me save you the time, Ali. Never look into that. Don't even Google it. And okay. so we're going to we're going to do a joke called Bitcoin Corey's vision. And I've actually made the different like denominations of money, like pictures. So I've made the pictures already. It's just a big picture of Corey's face with like some fake numbers on the side and a barcode. <laughs> and then uh, also backstage passes. We like to sell backstage passes because, you know, we have a backstage now. There are people backstage right now. Audience. Oh, and you could be backstage and then it's not like a you know Def Leppard backstage where we you know close the interview and then start doing coke and stuff but like we'll close the interview <laughs> and uh, and we'll hang out you guys can ask us questions if any of your crypto desires like don't but don't be that person 
audience i'm talking to you that like is like hey have you heard of uh wyx token and they're supposed to have a cryptographic excel spreadsheets and like i don't want to hear about some stupid token all right just come hang out with us all right go read about stupid tokens in your own time that's what <laughs> Don't bring it into your space. Well, yeah. would you guys ever have a real backstage, like, tour the Bitcoin podcast now that things are opening up? Well, it depends on how many millions our NFT sell for, to tell you the truth. <laughs> there you go. So that's the pivot. <laughs> no. um, I mean, I've always had a dream that we had a location, you know, like an actual studio that was yeah. somewhere where, but that is, that's a big undertaking for us. It's basically like, screw all of our personal lives and let's just go move somewhere. And I, I just don't see that happen, right? It's just right. not gonna happen. But going on tour, I don't know. Jesse, would you go on tour after you know, you're know you done with med school, and internship, and residency? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess. In your free time. <laughs> in your free time. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Um, Where do you fit in the powerlifting? I know. I try. <laughs> what did you hurt, man? Yeah. So I, I put like, I, you know, you know, when, when it's like relatively lightweight and somehow you injure yourself. Uh, so like I was, I was, I, I had my belt on, I had, I think it was only 415 on the bar and I was repping it out, but I wasn't holding my breath properly coming down and I felt something like kind of like slide and kind of click and like, it feels like, it feels like, like, like juicy liquid in your back. Oh, and I was on. like, oh, okay. I hurt my back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i i was squatting and uh oh, i man. didn't breathe on the properly i didn't hold the, i didn't hold my air properly and i was just it, it should have been a normal like you know sets of three and yeah i messed up <laughs> well good for you for taking time off <laughs> yeah so i mean i'm just you know body weight stuff now <laughs> yeah sure no i can't say powerlifting is smart it's fun but it's not intelligent i'm yeah. I'm also not trying to live forever or whatever. I'm glad I made it this far. <laughs> Did you go to the doctor, Jesse, for your back? No. No, I didn't. I was just like, you know what? It's probably like a sprain. Hopefully, I'm just going to let it heal. And have it's okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, there's always back pain now. <laughs> Dude, you got to be down with dogs. Downward dogs fix the shit out of my yeah? body. Yeah? Okay. I'll try those. Yeah. Just, just do them every oh, yeah. morning. What's up? Do a downward dog. You're good to go. No, honestly, like, from powerlifting, I realized, like, my joints are not genetically built for this. Like, some people have <laughs> thick wrists and just they're thick people. You blaming your parents? Nah, nah, <laughs> Allie. You, you, you squat, like, I was, I was 175 pounds at the time, right? So, Dang. like... When you when you're doing multiple multiples hey. and you're not paying attention to what you do, there is only so much, in my opinion. If you're natural too, right? If you're on drugs, like, I mean, you recover faster. You are better. You're a, you're a superior human being <laughs> while you're on the drugs. But you know, once you come, supposedly they make you taller too. You can like grow into steroids, and it just stays. Yeah, that's that's a, that's attractive. I could I could finally <laughs> hit six foot. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm five two. From everything that I've seen, oh, there you go. From everything I've seen on Tinder, I need to start taking steroids right now. There's a lot of girls out there that are like, if you're not six feet, don't even swipe on me. Don't even look at Did me. Did you say that? And I'm like, what? That's so offensive. Uh, like, sometimes, well, there was one time I swiped, and then I had the date, and then had to show them, like, yeah, I'm not six feet tall. I got you. Right. Oh no! <laughs> I got you. I got you. I'm paying for. I'm paying for the you gym. show up I like Tom you. Cruise with like the platform shoes. Yeah, I walked tall. <laughs> I walked tall. Uh, um. Okay, so you're bona fide in crypto now, which is cool because we need a lot of people bona fide in crypto now. So now, how much pressure do you feel from your group of friends as being the quote unquote Bitcoin person or crypto person? Like, are people coming <laughs> to you now for like? Hey, what should I put my money in? Should I buy Doge? Should I buy Ether? Should I buy... Is that happening to you now? I mean, yeah, I guess so. Here, my roommate's right here. You're asking me a bunch of questions about... You want to get in on crypto? Hey. Hi. Hey. I want to so badly. Like, after this weekend... I... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh -oh, Mike. Uh -oh, Mike. What Mike is gone. 
Uh, came to the oh. uh, conference with me and is now just like deep in it too. I'm hooked. Yep. What's your name? I didn't get your name. I don't know why my audio is messed oh. up. Tell them. All right. Tell them. Can you hear us? <laughs> All right. I want to talk more. <laughs> She's on a, a kickball game right now. Oh, well, that's fun. Yeah. Oh, okay, hold on a second. I think oh. when I unplug the. Uh... Can you hear us? Hello. She's fixing audio. Where's the tempo? Hit the technical difficulties. Yeah. Oh yeah, Sorry, here, this... here. I got you. Uh, okay, no, 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 wait, no, wait. We might break it. We might break it. Mess with it. I, I, wait. I just hovered over it. Oh, okay. Let me try this. Should I click it now? I don't know, man. We're just winging it. <laughs> We're just winging it. We're gonna this out. We will. No. Back. Oh yes, yes. Nice, nice. You're back. Okay. Welcome back. Yeah, I'm well. <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> she should definitely get into crypto, man. Like, you, she knows where to go. Well, you first stop probably you, second stop us, and then, right. you know, she can just dive in. And the people it's we awesome. met at the conference, too. She's got Litecoin now. Is that going to make uh, you guys mad? The Bitcoin podcast is we're talking about a different... Well, you guys call them shit coins. Is that it? <laughs> no, we don't do that at all. We're not. See, that's things. We're not a maximalist podcast. Like we're not. I don't like crypt. Uh, I don't like Bitcoin, Ellie. Jesse actually does not like Bitcoin and will not own any of it. And that's yeah. ironic. We we consider it ironic because he's a host on the Bitcoin podcast, and I can't seem to be able to change his mind. And maybe it makes me feel some type of way. But um. Litecoin is like the test net for Bitcoin, but it's an expensive test net. So, um, yeah, we're not a maximalist podcast. In fact, I've went to a Bitcoin maximalist conference and spoke against maximalism. I didn't get any boos because nobody wanted to boo me, but I did mm -hmm. let them know, like, hey, you know, Bitcoin is not going to do everything you can. And they were like, whatever, man, you don't know what you're talking about. So um, and like. I've also found that any maximalist, they call it, has a little bit of the uh, conspiracy theory kind of line of thinking with a, I don't know, it's just strange. It, they're, sometimes they're strange. Jesse, you know what I'm talking about? Like they, they're they so gung-ho about things that it almost looks like they're believing in mythology. Mm, uh, no. You know, so you said no? No, I, I, I'm not aware of that. Well... I'll, I'll put it to you like this. At the Bitcoin maximalist conversation, I had a lunch conversation with a maximalist that tried to tell me that we could resolve global warming by just breeding cows in the Sahara Desert because they would shit and grow trees. Mm. And I was like, mm, that's weird. You know, and so that's, that's the kind of personalities that we're talking about that are maximalists. Okay. Um, yeah, I spoke to some uh, visionaries for sure. At the oh, yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah, where it's like it goes beyond just the technology. And like there's one dude was telling me about how he's building, building like the central nervous system of the combined human race. When really it's just like helium. He's just he's just giving people helium miners <laughs> like, OK. Hmm. Are you familiar with the? Uh... No. Is he, that another? Kind it's of... like there's, I have one over here actually. Um, it's a like a Wi-Fi that's like the, they call it the people's network. So you just plug it into yours, and then you can connect to other people that have them around you, and then things, the Internet of Things, will connect to you. So there are a lot of scooters that go by my place because I'm in LA, and all of those need to connect to something. So they're using my helium miner. And paying me whenever they use. Hmm. Oh, so it's like a router. Yeah, it's like a mesh net router. I right. think. I'm and they pay me in helium. That's actually pretty H and T. Cool. That's that's actually really cool. I um, that's very possible too. There was once, like a long, long time ago, when I first got into Bitcoin, somebody was trying to make a Bitcoin router, and their whole idea of it was just that. No. Oh. Your phone's right there. It's right there. I know. I'm sorry. Well, it's because I switched to my mic. Now you can hear everything. <laughs> I, okay. He's going for silent. There we go. <laughs> um, 
And basically, he was like, you know, when Amazon has all these drones running around, the easiest way to route them is to use people's airspace. And if you had a Bitcoin router, the drone could just pay your router to use the airspace over your home. And I was like, wow, that actually makes a lot of sense. So I'd like to talk to that helium guy, actually. Might, might, be, on, might be on to something. Funny story. I gave them your email. They want to come on the show. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I uh, well, I was talking to Corey about it, but I yeah, just nice. made the connection. They they'll be emailing your Bitcoin podcast email. Interesting. So, any other weird stuff like that? Ideology. Oh, by the way, the, so the guy that I met that was talking about that is a different guy that than who's emailing you, but they all are idealists. I'm trying to think of. Oh, another woman was like, um, trying to explain to me how the blockchain will allow everyone to be their authentic selves and like live their, their full truth. I'm like, I don't know how like <laughs> getting away, getting away from like corporate banks is going to like, or how are corporate banks holding you back from being your authentic self? I don't know. <laughs> uh, and I, it was hard to dig deeper because they're just so like up here talking about it as a big picture thing. And I'm like, yes. I think I'm I'm either too dumb to get this or you're a crazy person. It's there's yeah, a lot there's of crazy a, people. There's a lot of um high thinking. Not high level. I meant to say that. There's a lot of high thinking <laughs> in the crypto. High community. thinking. Yeah. Not high level. Yeah. There's high thinking in the crypto community. No, I'm kidding. I make fun of us because I am us. We do have a lot of lofty dreams, and I have thought that blockchain was going to cure everything. Um, but obviously, how? Huh? How? I don't know, man. I was high. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Makes sense. Okay, fair enough. No, no. Um, it, it just has a lot of potential, but you know, we're still at the very early stages of this stuff. Hmm. So it's very cool that like. When we first started this podcast, we wanted to do a lot of like human interviews, like just human, not like always some sort of expert in the field or not someone who is a super investor or someone who's a pro pontificator. Like we wanted someone, we wanted these human stories. Like we didn't, and yours is awesome because like we've actually, the first show you were like, you know, confessing how you were like, yeah, I got some Bitcoin for something I did on the internet and now I'm rich kind of. And then now you're like, oh, I've gone to a crypto conference. Like I've seen this, I've seen it from the tap. I've seen the crypto community, you know, from the well. And I just hope that you can continue. You're gonna continue to like, you know, build your own little crypto story. I guess, like, I guess that's what it all boils down to. So, yeah, no question. And this is, I'm sucked in. And like, just from the fact that I've put this my first NFT out, and if it does sell, no matter how much, I feel like a moral obligation to be, to not just like tap out, you know, to be an artist and increase the value of whatever art that other people have, or even the like the physical ones that I've mailed to people, those 2,800 some, if I'm growing myself as an artist, then that's also growing the value of those artworks that I've given to people. So yeah, it's, I feel this type of obligation to the continue to legitimize my work and nfts seem the way to do it have it's, you ever given thought ellie to doing um the people-esque like video like the cgi stuff versus like the paintings yeah mine has always been like phys physical stuff although i do yeah. yeah i mean i haven't until this exact moment but darn you I don't because it's interesting stuff, because well, gonna... he, here's the thing ellie like there's this guy that we had on earlier, right? His his, uh, his name was Chad McKnight or Chad Knight, Chad Knight, and um, he had a pretty cool story. Uh, I guess I guess he's also somewhere in the California area, but he he was a skater. And Alicia and I interviewed him, and she was really uh, hyped about it because she used to see him in magazines, skater magazines, I guess. And um, he anyway, long story short, he got into shoes and shoe designing in um, 3D modeling software. And he's also making his NFTs using, um, you know, the basically 3D uh, tools that people and everybody else is using. And his artwork sells for a lot, actually. And it's interesting because I wonder if it's just because their stuff moves and potentially has sound. And yeah. that makes them inherently more valuable than pictures that don't move, maybe. 
And so what I'm wondering is if you take your artwork and you make it like 3D and make it like twirl or whatever, but it's inherently the same based on inspired by, you know, your 2D art, I wonder if it would be worth more. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was talking about. Like, what can I do with NFTs that I can't do with a painting? And so it is having that like deeper level of whatever music involved, or even I sell you the rights to the music. So, like, there's more there than just a painting. And yeah. before I actually said, screw you, regular job to be a YouTuber full time, I was a lead artist at a video game company. So I have the ability to make that kind of stuff. Now you're oh, okay. kind of convincing me that I should be doing yeah. animation. <sighs> well, so a part of what I've also I've been looking into with like the 3D uh, modeling, you can then 3D print that, right? So yeah. what if you buy the NFT and the owner of the NFT has ownership of the blueprint to actually physically print the thing too? Right. Mm. So now not just the NFT, but like a physical object that you can make appear in your home on your 3D printer, I think is really cool. That is really cool. There's, you know, I'm go sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, D. I was just wondering, like, if there's some sort of scheme to where you could actually get, you know, you said you sold like 2000 pieces of art or, or all this art over the years of people's like kind of get them to put some sort of unique identifier um on the blockchain as an nft just to show that they're like a part of your community a lot of what i love about nfts is like community building like you can build a community around just kind of the dumb things that become a community's language right like we say gpps and we say hodl plus and unless you listen to this podcast no one's gonna know what that is and i say it naturally in real life and people are like what's a gpp and i'm like it's a don't worry about it I'm like, no, what is it? I'm like, oh, it's a general purpose person. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't worry about it. It's an inside joke. You know, all these communal inside jokes can add value to a community. And I was like wondering, like, if there's any schemes like that that you've thought of for your community, um, how to partake in what you do, like how to partake in the process of built of making a piece of art. Yeah, yeah. So the, you're right about the other people like having my art there's there's 2000 people that have what went into that one nft it would be so cool for them to like place their stories somehow within the picture because this dog ended up here and this cat ended up here um what i have been thinking about like leading up to the final like end of the auction in a week what saturday that i wanted to just like give away nfts the way i gave away all the paintings but if it's just like a free for all, it kind of feels like, oh, first come, first serve is crappy. I want it to be like there's a keyword in one of my videos where if you know it and put it, type it in, then like you get you're you're able to unlock the NFT and get it for free. Like that kind of thing. So right. So you guys could do that with like if they know what GPP means, then they're they have access to the, you know, limited edition of whatever they are. I think that would be really cool. Yeah. We're, you know what, Jesse? I don't think we're thinking hard enough. That's what I think. Oh, I'm not thinking at all about the NFT stuff. It's I can too much that. potential. It's like overwhelming. <laughs> no, here, here. you know what's interesting? Like if you secretly like don't tell anybody, Ali, but like secretly coded like some sort of four digit hash or whatever onto each painting before you had, you know, yeah, retrospectively, right? Sure. If you had marked them with with some number and, and had some sort of record like on a piece of paper, then you could actually create like the NFT representation of those paintings you distributed and say, if if you have the NFT for like the Bitcoin uh, piece of artwork, then if you enter the four digit hash that's secretly hidden on the painting, then they combine to make you know, like, I don't know, like Pokemon, like it evolves or something, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? To make something yeah. super rare, you know, that's something you could have done. That would have been interesting. I should have started that in 2007. <laughs> Thanks, <But> where were you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just pleased that I have pictures of all of them. What a, like that took yeah. enough work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was right, well, maybe that's. I just thought of this. It seems crazy, but like, could you incentivize your community to buy your different pieces of art, and then it gives them a piece of a bigger piece of art that sells? Oh, interesting. Like that, like the pleaser DAO kind of thing where they all collectively own a piece yeah. of artwork. 
like your whole community owns a piece of artwork and then that piece of artwork sells. And then when it sells, it's automatically distributed That's to cool. the wallets that contributed to owning that piece of art. Like, I feel like there's possibilities here. I feel like I'm not thinking hard enough, Jesse. Yeah, yeah or it using it almost like, like Kickstarter, but instead of like just collecting money, um, you you give people rights to the song that you you convince them to believe in, and then you produce the song with their with their support and their donations, and then they get a cut of the success of the song once it's released. Nice. So now that you are officially like I, I can see your gear spinning and <laughs> wheels turning, like your crypto the crypto possibilities. <laughs> How to be an entrepreneur in crypto. How to combine right. art with crypto. <laughs> right. Are you are you in it for the tech? Are you in it for the money? I'm in it for the tech. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was asking you, Ali. I want to Oh me? No. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. I'm in it for the, the people, not the tech or the whatever. It's about like making dope things and being like, look what I did. Do you want to be a part of it? You're so crypto now. I love it. You like you fit. <laughs> That's in crypto. Yeah. I had no idea. I've never felt like I fit in saying that kind of thing before. So cool. <laughs> That's a very crypto thing to say, and the reason that you said it so naturally is so awesome. Like, um, and it, the joke is like if you're in it for the tech, but like you're also like I really hope this tech makes me rich. Like yeah. I'm, you know. What I mean? So. Well, uh, there's nothing wrong with money too. I uh, <laughs> think there's too much, too much around like, oh, if you're not a starving artist, then you're not making good work or whatever. No. And if, if anything, if you're making money on your good tech, that means you can invest in more awesome tech and take yeah, things further. I agree. I like Ali's perspective. <laughs> Jesse's definitely in it for the tech. Definitely. I'm definitely in it for the tech. <laughs> Why am I saying it like that? I literally bought like a thousand dollar keyboard plus like artisan keys just from like all the random stuff from crypto. I I literally get more tech with my money. <laughs> I don't understand how you make custom keyboards. I'll yeah. Oh, that's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother community. I don't know if you know about that, Ali. Custom keyboards. No. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I, do you have you worked with resin before? So I'm about to. But mm. not not the keyboard that you're thinking of. I'm gonna turn my electric keyboard into mm -hmm. a mood ring, so then you can see like where my hands have touched it, and it'll change colors. But it brought me into the custom keyboard world because people are doing that with yes, like, they are. You know, letter keyboards. Yes, they are. So that's where I got my research from. But interesting. I'm doing a music version of that. That's my next video coming out. Oh, that's dope. That's so dope. Jesse, bro, I will want to do this with you. Do you want to start a custom keyboard podcast? A podcast? No, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna be like an artisan making artisan keycaps. Oh, yeah, for fun shame on the on, side. Shame on me for wanting to do it. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna do it. You're gonna talk about it. There you go. Yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I do. I just talk about this stuff. I let other people do it, and I talk about it. Uh, did you see any crypto like projects at Miami uh, conference that you like are like you can't wait do something or something that really was like wow that's really cool um, you know something that blew you away anything blow you away um, I don't say blow me away I mean it was really surprising and I was like what the heck why isn't anybody why isn't everybody in on this Celsius have you heard of what they're doing mm -hmm. oh yeah you we, can yeah, yeah. We, definitely go I mean, ahead go ahead though I'm sorry I was like, Oh, well, I mean, after talking to them, I mean, they're obviously good marketers, but like, why would I ever just huddle by myself? I should be using them, you know? Celsius, Celsius has made a lot of our Slack members happy. I know that for a fact. Um, made Joe happy. Yeah, made Joe really happy. Um, Celsius, I actually interviewed them. See, so I have a lot of kick me, kick me in the ass moments in this space where they offered to come on our show um, and they wanted to pay us in like the Celsius token. And it was quite a bit at the time because they had just started and they were just trying to get their name out there. And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, don't worry about it. Just come on the show. Yeah. Damn, Jesse. Damn. No, um, but yeah, that was a good show. They're, they they do, just, they do solid stuff. And they have a lot of, um, uh, what's the word? Legitimate, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? 
sponsors, not sponsors, endorsements. A lot of people endorse what they do and they're very legitimate. So Celsius is a good project. Cool. Isn't it just like a, like, can you explain Celsius, Ellie? I, I have seen it, but I forget what it was about. If yeah, basically they give you interest on Bitcoin. So if you store your Bitcoin with them, you get a certain percentage. It's more for the first two and then a little less after that. And then they also will give you a loan up to 50%. No, wait, maybe it was 25% of whatever your Bitcoin is. And the interest back on that is not bad at all. Like, it's pretty crazy. You can get a loan on just having crypto. Is that is that, is that taxable? Like the loan that you get on your Bitcoin? Is that a taxable yeah, I don't event? Know. Okay. Because I know people are looking for that because people want to pull out their money. Like they want to keep their crypto in, but then pull out loans based on their crypto that are non-taxable events. That's, I think, what a lot of people in crypto are waiting for is, and that's what I think some of them might even refer. It's got some like the democratization of finance, they call it. But it makes access to stuff like that easy for the quote unquote little guys. Right. You can take Mm. your Bitcoin or you can take your. 50 ether or however much that you own. And instead of selling it and have to lose the value of the asset that you own, you just take loans against it in that that inflationary currency, the USD. You take loans against it. You know, of course, you're going to pay tax on that transaction. But now you've got liquidity. You've got something not I don't want to say liquidity, but you have dollars to use instead of using the asset. Like I don't really want to part with my Bitcoin, but I do want to unlock its value. Just like a home. I mean, people I, just want leverage, yeah. right? They, yeah, exa- exactly like a home. They want to be able to refinance, take that money, and then buy another home potentially and over leverage themselves into real estate. And if that home that they initially bought goes down in value and they have to be, you know, that they're forced to sell it, it's going to cause a chain of events that, you know, depending on if they repay back that, that uh, amount of um, equity that they pulled out on the refinance. It's just people want a way to leverage their money in, in ways to make more money that are risky inherently but i don't know they do how do you know ali do you know how um celsius is um making that interest are they are they loaning out your it, it actually do they give you do they take ownership of your bitcoin yeah i'm not sure about the details oh, okay okay um we actually interviewed him jesse it was just years ago so we, we do you remember that the old oh, they've been around a while no, that was that was 2017. So okay, uh, that's as much as I remember. It was four years ago. So uh, you know, that's a while back. Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm doing this. I'm bad at this. Hey, audience, you should go listen to our old show with Celsius, where we they told they told us all that stuff, right? Go listen. That's why we do these. Like, go into the go into the archives. You know, it's click so away. Valuable. You know, share with your friends. There you go. Um, no, I don't know if I have any more questions off oh, the top of my head. I'm just very looking. I'm forward. curious. Do you guys right. know the the people at Vault Logic? I met them too at the expo. They have ATMs where you can put in human dollars and get out Bitcoin into your wallet. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> but really those cool. charge a premium, though, right? Like a 20% premium. Like if you ever go to a, like a, a Bitcoin ATM at a gas station, at a grocery store, or whatever, if you look at the price of conversion, whenever you put real money into them, say Bitcoin's at 50K, well, they're going to charge you that uh, that deposit of, you know, 20 bucks in USD at a rate of Bitcoin being at 60K. Not really? Yeah. yeah there, are, there are ways. You, that's why you have to ask the questions like, how are you making that money? Like... What am I giving up? And that's really, you have to be really conscientious about how they're making you the money and what risks are at play. Because if you don't ask these questions, you'll, your money will be at risk and you won't know it. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty safe. It's actually where I went into the bank and I asked Bank of America that question too. And they were like, get out of here. <laughs> Go away. No, I'm kidding. Don't take questions. Um, yes, too many questions. No, um, yeah, do you have any questions for us? What? Why weren't you at the expo? Will I see you in June? <laughs> uh, what's going on in June? What is it? There's another one in Miami. I only heard I... about it because I was at this one. 
I went to so many crypto conferences. I was like crypto conferenced out. Does that if that makes any sense? It's like I don't know. There's only so many times you can see a bunch. You're of at stuff. one right now. What is that hotel? Uh, no, this is like a family vacation. They're just out doing stuff, and I got the room to myself. So, yeah, no, totally not a crypto conference. But <laughs> it's just you know, well, you go to so many conferences and they're like, "This is gonna change the world," and then you hear that at every booth, and there's like 45 booths. And now it's four years later, and it's like it didn't change the world. None of that stuff changed. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys are he is jaded. <laughs> jaded is one way to put it. Uh, the other way is like I'm realistic. Yeah, one in a thousand does. That's true. true. Like like Celsius was probably one of those companies, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> change the world. Go for it, bud. I just want you know. And so I was a little bit jaded. I saw some cool stuff. Like when I went to DevCon. I saw a robot pay a robot to work. That changed my life. I was like, oh, okay, so I'm in the right spot. Yeah, <laughs> crypto gets crazy, Ali. You're just, you're just at the tip of the iceberg, baby. Tip oh of the God. iceberg. It's big. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, but I don't know. I'll tell you what. If you make it to DevCon and DevCon ends up in Japan, I'm going to that. That's, that's going to happen. Because, one, I need to go to Japan. Uh, just because I've always thought it was really cool. Um, and I need to see, like, where uh, Ghost in the Shell was filmed. I got to see that. And then, um, you know, so if you go to, if you go to DEF CON, I'll meet you there. It's a commitment, man. Japan. All right. Japan's a hard one. one. Hey, man, you only go to Japan. Like, I mean, Japan's pretty dope. Yeah. Like, every time I look at it, that's in some way I really want to go. So... Um, I don't know, Jesse. Why aren't you going to conferences, bro? What's wrong? You can you can travel. Like, uh, I'm I'm studying, studying for my medical entrance exam. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, Ali. I I transitioned from working as an electrical engineer, uh, to find more fulfillment in my life, and so I'm switching to medicine. <laughs> yeah. Are you like 95? How many lives have you lived? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just uh, yeah. Ninety-five. He, the man ages well. He's actually forty-three yeah. years old. <laughs> he moisturizes. That's what it is. Drinks all kinds of water. He puts flowers in his water and shit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah cool. flower water. Yum. You never had flower water? Jill? Yeah, I actually I have. Well, so he invented it back in seventeen twenty-nine. Mm, that's right. <laughs> Seven seventeen twenty-six actually. Oh, right. <laughs> well. I'll ask you this uh, trademark question. Well, Jesse, you've already asked yours before. Yeah, right? I've asked Allie. It was, you asked know, is what you do actually hard? Yeah. The answer I don't think has changed, no. I mean... <laughs> 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 well, uh, you can, you can just sign up and be a YouTuber. They let you. Technically, you guys have a YouTube account, right? You're both YouTubers, too. This yeah, is on right. YouTube. On you YouTube. have my job. You're just like maybe not as good at it. I don't know. It's not we hard. We are not as good at it as you are. <laughs> this is way hard. This is way hard. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, it is. It is way hard. But we are not as good at it as Ali is. YouTube tricks because I'm counting subscribers every day, and when I get one, it's like a miniature party. Like I have I'm so excited. Yeah. You should see them in the back channels. You should. Yes. I, every time I'm like, we got a subscriber, guys. They click, they ding the bell, they ding the bell. <laughs> I want to set up an automation so that, like, when I, every time I get a subscriber, like a, a treat like drops down onto my desk or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, I get an M and M for every subscriber, it just like rolls down onto my <laughs> computer. <laughs> Wouldn't that be like, uh, what was that therapist? Not the, that psychologist that did the. Oh yeah. That's like you're, you're trying to the hack it to your brain. salivating thing. Oh my Pavlov. So you're gonna Pavlov. associate you're gonna associate M and M's with YouTube subscri subscriptions. That's, mm -hmm. that's oof, deep. <laughs> that's deep. Um, well, I would say being a YouTuber is incredibly difficult because <laughs> we're trying it. We're trying hard. We're getting there. Um, I guess in ten words or less, can you describe? An NFT. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, 
the original piece of artwork, but digital. Oh, that's good. Okay. Oh, did you see about I? You know, this is this is toward the end of the interview, but like, did you see that they're able to like clone somebody's piece of artwork and have it come from the same person? So you can actually duplicate. Somebody can duplicate your piece of artwork and make it come from your own address. This is uh, they like can, that they can make copies. Yeah. How's it was that an, it's an NFT vulnerability right now. Ooh. Yeah. <gasps> I crazy? hope someone does it to me. Hey, That'd be a great part of the story. Uh, when I was in high school, I did this life-size drawing of Audrey yeah. Hepburn, yeah. and somebody stole stole it from like on display in our high school gallery and i was like this is awesome somebody wanted my art so badly that there was a freaking art heist in high school and that, that thing is. was life-size so so if somebody like tried to steal my current nft i'd be like flattered good great do it <laughs> dang okay Jesse, i feel like we uh, just did the audience a huge injustice by Why? saying something like that and then cutting like being done like that's oh. like a good cliffhanger we just did some like amc show type shit that's the cliffhanger, oh. audience. Will okay, you know what that week. vulnerability is? Nope. Maybe you will if you tune in next week. We're gonna tell you what the NFT vulnerability is, and then you'll you'll know how to duplicate, dupe some NFTs, dupe Beeple's NFT, and become a millionaire. So, um, well, what do you? That's it. That's, a, that's the end of the interview. This was awesome. You guys are so easy to talk to. That's hey, you're welcome back anytime. Hell, you can come on the show Thanks. just to get, like it doesn't even have to be an interview. You can be an honorary host. I'm gonna come backstage and just hang out, do coke. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. You say that so easily, Allie. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? I love Coca Cola. I mean, it's kind of late for oh, caffeine right now, but okay. okay. I get it. <laughs> ah, okay. All right. All right. Well, guys, we're gonna go do some coke. <laughs> are you working in a job that sucks bows does your job suck and ergo your life do you want to change that because your life is sucking join the tbp slack get a better job 